All right. So we left off with Big Pinch getting his retribution on page 113. And he said, I said I'd get you and I got you, he yelled. I'm the warrior, Big Pinch. Not long after the first bright snow, another snow fell, grayer and heavier. The ice came in. The water had a transparent skim that broke apart and clicked together. Then went solid again, until they formed a tough gray coat of ice. Day Day surely had stopped to camp and to wait until the ice was thick before moving on. It snowed steadily and long, three days. While the snow fell outside, Angeline's friend, Ten Snow, used the red cloth Day Day had brought last summer as trim for a blue trade cloth dress she had she and Angeline were making. It was a ribbon trimmed graceful dress. Mama had trimming had trimmed a matching shawl with thimbles so that when she walked Angeline jingled softly and enticingly. Every so often she she was allowed to visit Auntie Muskrat's house. That was the only place she was allowed to visit alone, for Auntie Muskrat kept a strict eye on her. Any young men who visited would have to stand or sit outside on Auntie's log bench while Angeline stayed, dancing foot to foot, inside the cabin, craning out the window, laughing. The snow fell deeper yet, and in, in its grip, old Tallow had the best of luck. On the last day it snowed, she dragged from the farthest end of the island two plump beavers. The furs were thick and would fetch a good trade. She roped the beavers onto a little shed tied to another rope that circled her waist. Happily, she brought the meat to Mama and Grandma to prepare. She stayed in the yard, smoking her little pipe, while she made a fire outside to roast the meat over the coals. Although snow had fallen, Omakias thought, it couldn't be truly winter until Old Tallow put on her remarkable coat. Every year, the children watched to see that coat emerge, big and shaggy, and always different. Sewed with new furs, patched with discarded calicoes, even velvets. Old Tallow would wear it until the earliest days of spring. But now, even though the cold already bit in the mornings, she wore only her one earth-colored dress with the raveled hem. She even looked a little too warm as she bent near the fire, pulling in a burning stick and out to relight the new wad of tobacco in her pipe. She leaned back, adjusting her hat, and stared long at Omakeas. Omakeas looked into the fire. It was her job to keep so smoothing and arranging the coals into an even bed for baking the meat. But Tallow's eyes on her back made her itch. Whenever old Tallow looked at her like that, she could feel those fierce eyes resting on her skin. There was something peculiar in old Tallow's look, something different from the way she looked at every other human. It was something familiar, though, and this time, as Omakias glanced back and caught a corner, just a little shred of that look, she suddenly understood. Old Tallow was looking at her the same way she looked at her dogs. This was not a bad thing. In fact, it was good in a way, for old Tallow's look there was for in old Tallow's look there was true affection something she didn't feel for other humans. It made Omakias feel both strange and safe inside. She smiled to herself and had the odd, sudden, curious knowledge that if it ever came to that, Otala would protect her, Omakias, with her life. She didn't know why she knew that, but she just knew. Soon, Nokomis came out and took over, poking the coals this way and that to evenly set them. Soon, she would burn a fine crust onto the skin. Beaver, or amik, amik, was Dede's favorite meat. He loved the burnt flavor of its fat, and Mama cooked it in a special way. As soon as the meat singed and slightly burnt, she cleaned the beavers to wash their carcasses with salted water and stuffed them with corn and potatoes. Then she showed, sewed them shut and roasted them slowly in a big iron kettle. They sizzled in their own fat, and the acorns burned black. When the beavers were tender and completely cooked all through, she removed them, undid the meat from the bones, mixed the stuffing with the fried acorns, and cooked it all together in a soup once again. 
The aroma had old tallow pacing back and forth, hungrily. She looked eager as her dogs. And when Mama ladled the soup into her bowl, she bent to it with a savage will. Eating swiftly, old tallow put away one bowl and then another while Mama was dishing up the rest of the meal. It was lucky she ate so quickly, though, and put away so much, for just as Pinch was wiping bread, Piqua Zigung, across the bottom of his bowl and opening his mouth to ask for more, there was a stamping and shouting outside. The dogs barked, then stopped, when a familiar voice shouted, Gago, Gago. It was Day Day come home. As if summoned across the new ice by his favorite dish, he arrived in time to eat until he could eat no more. That night, the children went upstairs and slept in the loft, and Nokomis slept there too, instead of downstairs, besides Mama. Nokomis made her bed at the farthest end of the loft, where it was coolest. She put her old rabbit skin blanket down and slept on top of it. I sleep hot, she explained to the children. They, they didn't like to tell her, but she also slept noisy. Nokomis snored and often talked in her sleep, calling out to people from long ago. That night, Omakias woke in the dark and listened to her mother's, her grandmother's soft, regular breathing and then her murmur, half understandable, sometimes arguing and sometimes pleasant, as she dreamed old times and went visiting to places that only she remembered. All done.